HDR. Love it or hate it, it is a very useful technique that can be used to achieve something that perhaps your camera itself cannot achieve. What we're going to do today is we're going to take this subject from the ground up. I'm going to explain to you why we need HDR, how it actually works, and I'll show you an example of basically HDR in action. Of course, HDR is known for its abuse. It can be used in situations that, you know, don't really need it. It can be pushed really far to have an extremely stylized look, which some people like and some people really dislike. So we'll try to cover all of this from the ground up. You're watching another Random Wednesday episode on 0612 TV. Hello and welcome to another Random Wednesday episode. So HDR, what is it and what does it do? HDR stands for High Dynamic Range. Normally, when we're talking in the context of photography, we may sometimes say HDRI, which of course stands for High Dynamic Range Imaging. So what is dynamic range and why do we want it high? Here's the deal. For basically any device capable of capturing information from the real world, its dynamic range is a measure between the minimum it can capture and the maximum it can capture at one time. I'll explain this to you in the context of images. Now, let's say you have a scene that looks something like this. This scene actually has very bright parts and very dark parts. Now, our eyes are really good, they have a very high dynamic range, so we see all of it, and you know, all of it looks normal. But when we use a camera, that may not be the case. In the context of this particular scene, we can try to expose for the darker parts of the image, and we do that by tweaking whatever is necessary to bring up the exposure. However, when we do that, the bright parts of the image get blown out. Basically, they clip to pure white, and no matter what you do in post-processing, you will not be able to recover any detail from the region that has blown out. Similarly, if we try to expose for the brighter parts of the image by lowering the exposure, the darker parts of the image are going to clip the black. No matter what you do in post-processing, all you're going to get is a whole bunch of noise, but no real detail because information has been lost. This is a perfect example of your camera's dynamic range being too low to capture the full dynamic range of the scene. So how do we solve this problem? Well, we do it with High Dynamic Range Imaging, or HDRI. The concept behind HDR is this. Instead of just taking one picture and making do with that, be it, you know, crushing the darkest parts of the image or blowing out the highlights, instead, we take two images. One exposed for the darker parts of the image and one exposed for the brighter parts. What this means is we essentially have captured all the detail in a scene, just that we didn't capture it in one picture, we captured it in two. What we can do is we can use a post-processing technique to combine these two images, throwing out the parts that are not very useful and combining the parts that do have details from both those images. That is HDR post-processing. And what we're going to do is we're going to try and explore the whole concept behind this and we're also going to try and see it in action. So using the same two images I showed you just now, what we're going to do is we're going to put it into a software called Luminance HDR. This is my personal favorite when it comes to combining images, you know, in HDR. Now Luminance HDR does something very interesting called tone mapping. The whole idea of tone mapping is this. When two objects are side by side or very close together, then it's easy for us to tell if you know, their relative contrast is off. So what we do is we try to retain the contrast of things that are very close together. However, for two points that are quite distant in a same image, their relative contrast doesn't matter so much. This is exactly what tone mapping abuses to actually create a very nice, realistic, almost surreal looking kind of HDR image. It's not very useful to describe this, so let's jump into Luminance HDR itself and try to patch together an image. So what I'm doing here is I'm basically importing both those images. You can see that the program has actually read the EXIF information from the images and is able to tell me that you know one image has a higher exposure than the other. Now I shot these two images on a tripod mount 
which is why you know I don't have to worry too much about aligning them. If you shot HDR images handheld, which basically you can, but it's a little bit harder, what you're gonna have to do is you're gonna have to use an alignment method to get those images to line up perfectly. You can of course check this box and choose Hugin. Hugin is basically a tool that does just that, and it does a pretty good job. At any rate, I blaze past the next couple of windows and we end up at a preview window for HDR. Notice right off the bat that, well, now you can see details in all parts of the image. I click on the topmost image, which basically tells the program to use a technique called Mantwik 06. This is just one of the many tone mapping algorithms available in Luminance HDR, and this is my personal favorite because, well, the results look the nicest. This algorithm actually gives me several parameters which you can see me tweaking right now. Basically what I'm doing is, of course, I'm increasing the output resolution of the image so it doesn't appear so pixelated. And I can tweak the rest of the parameters as well to basically try and finesse this to the look I like. Now remember how I mentioned earlier that this is a process that can be abused? Let me show you some examples of taking these settings to the extreme. As you can see, with these settings I'm using, I can actually push the colors to a ridiculously saturated level. Of course, that looks quite ugly. I can, of course, back away the saturation, but bring up what is known as the detail factor. Basically, what this does is it emphasizes the edges a lot more, and you get an image that basically looks kind of grainy in a stylized manner. When it comes to producing your final HDR image, of course, there is a little bit of, you know, your personal taste going into the equation, and that's exactly what I'm doing right here. I'm balancing all the settings until it looks something I like. And then I can choose the maximum resolution, let Luminance HDR do its calculations, and then export this to a JPEG file. Once past this stage, I of course have an image file that I can, you know, put online, I can edit, do whatever I like to it. So there we go. We're just taking a look at what is HDR, why we may need HDR, and I've walked you through the process of actually creating an HDR image with Luminance HDR. I've also showed you some examples of how this can be abused. So yeah, we've basically looked at all of HDR, and well, hopefully if you're interested, you can basically just go out and start taking images, bringing them home, and doing HDR post-processing. That's basically all there is for this particular video. Of course, I should note at this point that when you actually do an HDR composite, you can use more than two images. You can easily use three, even five, even more. Though, you know, the amount of gains you get out of that may not be so much. The whole idea is you just want to have detail in every part of the image, regardless of the exposure of that particular part. As long as you have enough shots to cover all the detail in an image, then you're basically done. So that's all there is for this particular video. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you learned something today and I hope you would actually give HDR a try. But yeah, thank you very much for watching. Until next time, you're watching 0612 TV. Thank you very much for watching. If you like this video, consider checking out the rest of my work on my channel. Alternatively, you may be interested in a playlist of my earlier work on photography and image editing subjects. If you'd like to show me some monetary support, I am on Patreon. You can find a link to my campaign in the video description. Of course, you can simply like this video or leave a comment. I'll be sure to respond as soon as I can. To keep in touch with my future uploads, do subscribe to this channel. And for even more updates, check out the official Twitter account for this channel at 0612TV. Thank you for your support.